بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Continuing now with our journey through Umdat al-Fiqh of Imam Ibn al-Qudam al-Maqdisi rahimahullah ta'ala with the permission of Allah azza wa jal today we will finish Kitab al-Tahara the book of purification if you have your books we're going to return to the statement of the Imam where he said وَأَقَلُّ الْحَيْدِ يَوْمْ وَلَيْلَ يَوْمٌ وَلَيْلَ The least of the period is a day and a night. We'll start from there again, inshallah. So if you find that sentence, <coughs> that the Imam, he says according to him, that the least of the period is a day and a night. Okay, so the reason they say this is because the Sharia didn't define what is the least. Okay, so they say in the absence of a definition of the Sharia, you go back to the customs or what is customarily found, normally found amongst the people. al adatu muhakkama, as they say. So it's found that generally the woman, her least is a day or a night. This is the, the, the common norm. So this is why they took this. And also they have the uh, famous story, story of Ali radiallahu anha, anhu. When a woman came to him and she said, I have completed my idda period, meaning she, she has three cycles in one month. So he brought his qadi, uh, Shurayh al-Qadi, famous Qadi in his time. And he said, give judgment on this. So he gave the judgment that this can take place because the woman, she had, like I gave the example, she had the period of one day, purification of 13, and then one day, purification of 13, and then one more period of one day and night. So based upon his statement, and he's from the Khulafa al-Rashidin, that they say this is also an evidence that the least is a day and a night, okay? Tayyib. Others, like Ibn Taymiyyah, they say that, and Imam Malik, they say, no, whenever the blood is seen, that's when the rulings of the blood take place, whether it's least in a day or night, or more than a day or night, okay? But our Imam, and uh, those who agree with him, he says, no, it has to be a day and a night for it to be considered hayd. So if it's less than a day and a night, what is it? Yeah, what's the word for it? What's the term? Istihada, okay? Damul istihada, which is that it's a different type of blood which comes from the womb, but it's not damul hayd. So he says, And the most of it that it can be is 15 days. The most that it can be is 15 days, okay? So if a woman has blood more than 15 days, what do we consider it after 15 days? Again, damul istihada. We say it's that damul istihada, or it's known as damul marat, okay? It's that blood which is other than the menstruation blood. And the least purification between the two sets of periods, okay, is 13 days. So if a woman has a period for 10 days, and then she has purification for 10 days, and then she has another set of blood for 10 days, what do we say about the second blood? We say it's not hayd. It can be part of it, but first off we look at it, we say it's not hayd. Why? Because the middle 10 days was not enough for the length to meet the required length of purification. So she had 10 days bleeding, menstruation. Then she had 10 days purity. After the 10 days purity, she had another 10 days of blood. So the second set of blood, 10 days, we say this cannot be menstruation, right? Because she had to have had how many days between the two sets? 13. 13 days of purity. And she didn't reach 13 days of purity. So we say this is not Dhammul Hayd. Tayyib. And the Imam says, Wala had li And there's no, there's no set limit for the most of the purification. Meaning that a woman, she can have menstruation and then for the rest of her life, she can be pure. She can have menstruation and then for the rest of her life, never experience the menstruation again. So there's no limit to how long the purification, the purity lasts. Tayyib. The Imam he says, وَأَقَلُّ sin تَحِيدُ لَهُ الْمَرْأَةُ تِسْعَ سِنِينَ وَأَكْثَرُهُ سِتُون That the least, uh, the least limit or the least age that a woman will find herself menstruating in is the age of nine. And the most is 60. So before nine, دَمُ istihada. After 60, دَمُ istihada. Okay? And we said that the Mu'tamad, the agreed upon opinion in the Hanbali Madhab is 50 years. But in any case, the Imam he says, nine, to 60. Anything outside of that is considered dam al-istihada. And then he says, 
wal mubtada now he's going to start with the classifications or the rulings of the woman who experiences hayd for the first time she is known as the beginner al mubtada okay her rulings are generally the most difficult rulings for her okay the classical or the mashhur opinion in the hanbali madhab okay and this is peculiar to them they say that this mubtada the first time she sees blood right the first time she sees blood what does she do if it's more than a day and a night okay she considers that to be hayd and after that day and a night she makes ghusl ihtiyatan out of uh, possible ihtiyatan means possibly that the blood for that day and a night was hayd so they say to her we're going to put upon you that the day and the night the 24 hours is definitely going to be hayd blood okay so she sits for 24 hours and then she makes ghusl. This is the mubtada, the first time she's ever experienced hayd, menstruation. And then after the 24 hours, she considers herself as a ha'id, the one who experiences other blood, not menstruation blood. So what she does, what she does now after the 24 hours, she's made ghusl, right, at the end of the 24 hours, she can now pray. She can now fast. She can now do everything else that she wants to do from the acts of worship, except that her husband cannot approach her to have relationships with her. Because it's possible that this blood that she's experiencing is hate. You see the difference what they're doing here. They're saying the first time she has blood, we don't know her situation. It's her first time. So for 24 hours, we can say for sure, because the least of hate is one day and one night. So that's surety, that's certain. So what is certain, we're going to make that as a ruling for you. That 24 hours, that is menstruation. So after the 24 hours, you have to do ghusl. Then you can do whatever you want from the acts of worship. All you need to do is to protect yourself, that the blood, you, you put a tampon or something of that nature, you protect yourself with the blood not coming out, and you make wudu for every salah. Okay? They say you do this for the whole month. Okay? And if your blood stops before 15 days, if the blood stops before 15 days, you make ghusl again, okay? Because this is the ghusl of surety. Now that your blood has finished, for sure your hayd has finished. They say then you repeat that three times, meaning uh, for three months. The same situation that I described, you repeat it for three months, for this mubtada, the beginner. At the, in the third month, she comes to realize now she has a ada. Ada means now she has a habit. She becomes to the second category that we're going to discuss later. She's, she's gone from mubtada now to being mu'tada, the person who has a habit. Because in the first month, maybe her blood stopped on 10 days. The second month, maybe it stopped on 11 days. Okay? The third month, maybe it stopped on 13 days. So what they said to her, basically the first 24 hours, for sure that was hayd. You do ghusl after 24 hours. Then you consider yourself to have istihada. You make wudu for each salah. And you do that for three months. On the third month, you will know what your habitual days or your habitual period for menstruation is. But then they say to her, anything that you did from acts of worship outside of those uh, days which are now known to you, that your, your period is now 10 days, but you carried on for 15 days, right? Doing acts of worship with that blood still flowing maybe. They said those days now, okay, you have to make up. The days that you did before whilst you were um, bleeding, you have to make up those days. Anyway, I just mentioned this. The reason I mentioned this is because this is the majority opinion in the Hanbali Madhab from which school our Imam is. But our, our Imam and those who agree with him who are in fact the majority, they take an easier opinion. The easier opinion, the Imam, he says, wal mubtada'a. The mubtada'a is the one, as we said, she sees blood for the first time. What does she do according to our Imam and those who agree with him? They say, If she sees blood in a time where it's possible for her to have menstruation, then she sits. When is the time when it's possible for her to have menstruation? What does he mean here? Very good. After nine years old, right? Once she's reached nine years, now it's possible for her to experience menstruation. And he says, then she sits. What does it mean she sits? Sits away from the acts of worship like prayer and fasting and other acts of worship that we mentioned, the 10 things that is not allowed to happen for her, okay? Jalasat. So the Imam, he says, this blood which she's seeing for the first time, if it's less than a day and a night, 
24 hours is not hayd, it's not menstruation, it's considered dam istihada, okay? وَإِنْ جَاوَزَ ذَلِكْ وَلَمْ يَعْبُرْ أَكْثَرَ الْحَيْدِ فَهُوَ حَيْدِ And if it goes beyond 24 hours, but it doesn't go beyond 15 days, right? If it doesn't go beyond 15 days and nights, then it's considered hayd. So it goes over 24 hours, but not beyond 15, then it's considered hayd for this person. So the Imam is saying you don't have to do what the other Hanbali scholars mentioned about the repetition of, uh, of making ghusl from the first 24 hours and then staying for three months to find out if this is your ada or not, okay? He says, no, as soon as the blood comes and it's more than 24 hours, you consider it to be hayd, as long as it doesn't go over 15 days, okay? So if the woman's blood goes over 16 days, uh, then we say, no, you have an issue now. Your dam is now dam mustahada. That's a separate set of rulings which we're going to deal with in a moment. So anyway, the imam, he says, فَإِذَا تَكَرَّرَ تَكَرَّرَ ثَلَاثَةَ أَشْهُرْ بِمَعْنَ وَاحِدْ صَارَ عَادَ so if this woman's blood, the one who started for the first time, so in her first month, it's over 24 hours and less than 15 days, let's say it's 13 days. So the same thing happens to her in the second month, that it was more than 24 hours and it was 13 days long, her blood, her period. Then it happened again in the third month. The Imam, he says, now you've become mu'tada. Now you've reached the classification of being mu'tada, meaning now you have a ada. Ada means you have a habit. You have a fixed habitual menstruation, which is that it's beyond 24 hours and it lasts for 13 days and it doesn't go beyond 15 days. Okay, because if it goes beyond 15 days, we have to now look at a different classification, which is dam istihada. Okay, so the Imam he says, وَإِنْ عَبَرَ فَزَائِدُ الْإِسْتِحَادَ And if it goes beyond 15 days, then the extra blood is considered dam istihada, not dam hayd. Okay. So if she goes now to that category of where the blood goes over 15 days, she becomes mustahada. Okay. What does she have to do at the end of her hayd? Okay. When is the end of her hayd if she becomes mustahada? 15 days. After 15 days, right? Because 15 is the most it can be for hayd. After 15, we put her, we put her in a different classification. We say now she's mustahada. She's experiencing dam istihada, okay? But if it's less than 15 days, her situation is simple. We know that your period is from 24 hours, okay, up to 13 days, for example, or 10 days or 7 days, whatever it be, 3 days even, okay? That's her period. But if it goes over 15 days, now she has a different set of issues that she has to deal with. So if it goes over 15, then her blood is now considered istihada. وَعَلَيْهَا أَن تَغْتَصِلَ عِنْدَ أَخْرِ الْحَيْدِ so when she finishes her hayd, which is 15 days for the one who has istihada, then she has to make ghusl. Why? Because Aisha radiallahu anha narrates in Sahih al-Bukhari that Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, she asked the Prophet sallallahu she said, Inni ustahadu fala athhar. I have this blood continually flowing with me and I don't become pure from it. Meaning on and off or continually for months. It just keeps on coming, right? Afa'ada'u salah, should I leave alone the prayer? The Prophet sallallahu said, no. Dalika irq. Rather that is a vein in your womb that has caused you this problem. But no, rather leave alone the prayer for the length of time where you would have hayd. Okay, so the length of time you would have hayd, leave alone the prayer for that and then make ghusl. Okay, so for this woman who's gone over 15 days, her length of time is the 15th day. There she has to make the ghusl, right? After this, the Imam, he says, وَتَغْسِلُوا فَرْجَهَا وَتَعْصِبَهُ She, um, this one who has istihada, the blood is continuing over 15 days. What does she do? After making the ghusl, the blood continues. All she has to do is protect her private parts after washing it, and she makes a wudu for each prayer. Okay? ثُمَّ تَتَوَدَّ لِوَقْتِ كُلِّ صَلَى وَتُصَلِّ And then she makes wudu for each prayer, and she prays. This is the mustahada. Okay? The one whose blood went over 15 days. She makes wudu for each prayer, meaning to say that according to our imam and the majority, every time the time finishes for the prayer and the new time comes in, she has to make wudu. Okay, again. Imam Malik and those who agree with him, they said no. They said she remains upon wudu until one of the other nawaqid of wudu happen, one of the other things which break wudu happen. Because her situation is a peculiar situation. It's not in her control. Right? 
So it's not, it doesn't make sense for us to say to her, make wudu. Why make wudu? Because she's going to break it the moment she makes it. Right? She's unable to become pure from this thing, which is that blood, al-istihada. Al, al so according to Imam Malik, he says, no, you only make the wudu if another thing breaks your wudu. Like, for example, you sleep, like you have a different excretion, like you pass wind, these things, okay, that we mentioned before in the chapter of wudu. Anyway, our Imam and those who agree with him, they said what? They said, for each salah, she has to make wudu. وَحَاكَدَ هُكُمُ مَنْ بِهِ سَلَسَ الْبَوْلِ and the Imam, he also mentions, mentions as extra information that there's a category of people known as those who have salas al bowl. Salas al bowl is that the person has urine continually dropping from their place of excretion, okay, from the private part, whether man or woman. The urine continually comes throughout the day, drops of urine. So this person has the same ruling as the one who has istihada, as the mustahada. What does he do? Every salah he has to make wudu as well as protecting his private part from the urine which comes out, okay? Sheikh Abd Aziz Rajahi, in his explanation of this book, he said, what the person should do, he should look carefully. If there's a time in the day where the urine stops, or the blood stops, right? For a period of an hour, half an hour, whatever, whatever it be. That's the time the person should make the wudu and pray. That's the best thing that the, this person can do, okay? And the Imam, he said, وَمَنْ فِي مَعْنَاهُ And also those who have something similar to that. Meaning anybody else who is like the, the mustahada, continual blood coming out, or continual urine coming out, salas al bowl, anybody else who is like that. For example, somebody who has a continuous nosebleed, okay? Or somebody who passes wind continuously. They take the same ruling as we just mentioned. They make wudu every so often, every, every prayer. And if there's a time, like Sheikh Abd Aziz Raji, he said, wherein there's a gap from this um, najasa, then that's when they pray. The Imam says, فَإِذَا اسْتَمَرَّ بِهَا دَمْ فِي شَهْرِ الْآخِرِ فَإِنْ كَانَتْ مُعْتَادَ فَحَيْدُهَا أَيَّمْ عَادَتِهَا So a woman, she has hayd, but her blood has gone over 15 days. And now if this blood continues into the next month, what does this woman do? The Imam, he says that if she's a person that has a habit, she knows that before this situation occurred to me, like she was normally having habitual hayd, seven days each month, right? So before this situation came upon her, which is that now her blood is continual, what does she do? She goes back to the days of her habit. She knows that continually throughout my life, I was having a habit of seven days. So now I'm having blood which is continual for six months. I don't look at this continual blood. All I have to do, I have to sit every month for seven days. Seven days every month because that was my normal habit before this illness came upon me. This is what the Imam is saying, okay? فَهَيْدُهَا أَيَّامْ عَادَتِهَا وَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ مُعْتَادًا وَكَانَ لَهَا تَمِيزٍ And if she's not a person that had habit before, right? But she had tamiz. Tamiz is that she can differentiate between the blood types. وَهُوَ أَنْ يَكُونَ بَعْضُ دَمِّهَا أَسْوَدْ ثَخِينٍ And it is tamiz, the one who is mutamayiz, the one who has tamiz, she can differentiate between the blood types. The Imam is telling us that, it, that this is that the woman, she can look at her blood and she can say that, okay, in these days, the blood is dark and it's thick. So he's only mentioning two of the, uh, of the classifications. We mentioned four, right? We mentioned that it also has a smell and that it doesn't clot. So in any case, if she can determine what her blood is, differentiate between the hayd blood and the istihada blood, when she say, we say to her, then she is mumayyiz. She has tamiz, which is she can differentiate, okay? وَبَعْضُهُ أَحْمَرْ رَقِيقْ فَهَيْدُهَا زَمْنَ الْأَسْوَدْ ثَخِينَ So the Imam is saying that the woman whose blood continues over 50 days, if she is mu'tada, she has a habit, she sits the days that she habitually, habitually used to have menstruation. If she doesn't have a habit, what does she do? She looks to, can she differentiate between the blood? If she can differentiate by looking at her blood every day, she knows that, okay, for 10 days my blood is dark. Then we say to her as a ruling, those 10 days when your blood is dark, that's the time when sh you should be sitting in the month. And everything above that, where the blood is normal red blood, that's considered istihada. So the rulings of the ha'id, the rulings of menstruation, won't apply to you in those times, okay? And this is taken from the hadith in uh, Abi Dawood, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Adamul Hayd, uh, Aswad Yu'raf. 
that the blood of menstruation is dark and it's well known, meaning the smell of it is well known and its characteristics are well known. So if the woman doesn't have a habit, she goes to tamiz. Tamiz is that she can differentiate the different characteristics of the blood. But this tamiz, it has to be tamiz as salih. Salih means righteous or correct. If it's tamiz ghayru salih, she can't go to tamiz. Okay? So there's a third situation which the Imam he didn't mention. Or he's going to mention it in a moment. So tamiz ghayru salih, this differentiation being able to distinguish the blood, it has to be that the blood of Hayd for her, she can distinguish the blood. She can say, okay, I can tell that these days my blood is dark and these days it is light, it's red. But the dark days of blood shouldn't go over 15 days. If the dark blood goes over 15 days, then she cannot use tamiz. Because the tamiz now is not salih. It's not appropriate to use as a ruling because we said 15 days is the most that there can be hayd. Okay? So if she falls into that situation, she doesn't have a ada or she doesn't have tamiz. Now the imam, he says, وَإِنْ كَانَتَ الْمُبْتَدَى If she's a beginner, أَوْ نَاسِيَ لِعَادَتِهَا Oh, she forgot her habitual days. She forgot her ada. وَلَا تَمِيزْ لَهَا Nor does she have tamiz. She cannot distinguish the blood types. Okay? What does she have to do? This woman who has this situation, she cannot remember her ada, nor can she distinguish between the types of blood. She's known as mutahayyara. Mutahayyara means the one who is confused. And she's given that name because she's confused herself as she's confused the scholars. Because her situation is very confusing when you want to deal with it in its different types. So the Imam he says, فَحَيْدُهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَهْرْ سِتَّ أَيَّامْ أَوْ سَبْعَةً لِأَنَّهُ غَالِبُ عَادَةِ النِّسَاءِ This woman whose blood is continuing over 15 days, right? She used to have a ada. She's forgotten the ada. She's forgotten the habit. And she cannot make distinction between the types of blood. She cannot make tamiz. So what does she do? She sits for either six days or seven days. How does she determine those six or seven days? She looks to the close relatives that she has, like her sisters or her mother or her daughter even, if her daughter is of age. She looks to her close relatives and sees when is their habitual days. Whenever they have their habitual days, that's when she sits because she has no other thing that she can refer to. And this actually comes in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that he advised one of the Sahabiyat to do such in such a situation. Tayyib. As an extra, and the Imam, he doesn't mention this, that there is uh, an excretion which comes from the woman. It's known as al-sufra wal-kudra. Al-sufra and al-kudra is an excretion which comes from the woman. It can either come at the beginning of the hayd or at the end of the hayd or even during the hayd. The sufra and al-kudra, it has colors of looking like rusty pus. Okay? But anyway, the women, they know this color. It's not the blood of hayd, nor is it the blood of istihada. It's another excretion. Sufra tu wal kudra tu. Okay? If this comes uh, during the hayd, it's considered to be hayd, okay? If it comes after the hayd, after the habitual days of hayd, or after this situation when the Prophet ﷺ said, sit for the woman who is confused for six or seven days, is not to be considered as hayd. Tayyib, how does the woman know that her hayd, her menstruation has finished? In the time of Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet's wife وسلم, and she used to be the scholar for the women of the time. She was a very scholarly person. Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, Radiallahu Anha, our mother. So the women, they used to send to her cotton, okay, with what they would insert the cotton into their private parts and they would send it to her to determine, can I take this now, this effect which is on the cotton, to be a consideration that my hayd has finished. So she would say to them, don't do that. Rather, when you see Al Qasatul Bayda, when you see this liquid which comes out which is a white liquid which happens to many women when the menstruation ends that's when you will know that your menstruation has finished when al qasatul bayda comes it's a white liquid which comes and the women they know this when they see this that's when it comes or the other way which is uh, that many of the scholars they say if there's um, the dryness complete dryness and the way that is known a woman she inserts cotton and if it comes out with no effect whatsoever, no trace of blood or anything, then she knows for sure that her period has finished. Okay? The Imam, he says, Walhamil la tahid. The pregnant woman, she doesn't experience menstruation. Why? Because 
her absence of experiencing menstruation is a sign that she is pregnant, okay? So the pregnant woman doesn't experience uh, menstruation. If blood comes to her before she gives birth, because the blood we're going to talk about now, the nifas, comes after the birth, right? But if blood comes to her a day or two before giving birth, and it comes with some pain of contraction, then this will be considered as dam al-nifas, okay? But if this blood comes without a contraction, then it's considered as dam al-fasad, dam al-istihada, okay? Not dam al-hayd in any case. Okay, if it comes two days before her giving her birth, if it comes with the pain of contraction, then it's dhammani first, then it's postnatal bleeding. If it comes without that, okay, then it's considered dham al istihada, the dham of istihada. So the Imam he says, Walhamil la tahid, that the pregnant woman she doesn't uh, experience menstruation. Illa in tara a dham kabla wiladatiha bi yawmain aw thalatha fa yekunu dhammani first. Unless she sees this blood. Uh, before her uh, pregnant, before her giving birth, by a few days, okay? The Imam, he mentions now, Babu Nifas. He speaks about the chapter of postnatal bleeding. Nifas, linguistically, it means relief. Relief from having the child in her belly for nine months and the difficulty of carrying that child. May Allah have mercy upon the women of the Muslims. I mean, from what they go through, our mothers, and what they go through from giving childbirth. So nifas means relief. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this in the hadith, <coughs> in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ said, مَن نَفَسَ كُرْبَةً مَن نَفَسَ الْمُؤْمِنِ كُرْبَةً مِن كُرْبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِن كُرْبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever removes a hardship, okay, from the believer in the dunya, nafas, using the same word as nifas, then Allah gives him relief from the hardships on the Day of Judgment. So nifas linguistically means relief from a difficulty and a hardship. And technically, it's that blood which comes out after the woman has given birth and it can last for up to 40 days. There's no limit to its least, but its maximum is 40 days, okay? وَهُوَ الدَّمُ الْخَارِجِ بِسَبَبِ الْوِلَادَةِ And it is the blood which comes out due to uh, having given birth. وَهُكْمُهُ حُكْمُ الْحَيْدِ فِي مَا يَحِلُّ وَيَحْرُمُ and its rulings of this blood is the same as the rulings of Hayd in that which is allowed and that which is not allowed. وَيَجِبُ وَيَسْقُطُ بِهِ And that which is obligatory and that which is removed from the person. وَأَكْثُرُهُ أَرْبَعُونَ يَوْمًا وَلَا حَدْ لِأَقَلِّهِ Most of it is 40 days and there is no limit for its least. Okay? Um Salama رضي الله عنه and her as collected by Abi Dawood and Imam Ahmed and others. She said, كانت النفساء تجلس في أحد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أربعين يوما that the women who were experiencing experiencing postnatal bleeding they would sit for 40 days in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and why is this a proof that 40 days is the limit because this happened in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم meaning that a ruling was taking place whilst the Prophet was alive. And if it was wrong, the Prophet would have been informed about it by Allah and he would have corrected it. So the fact that there was no such statement that came from the Prophet and it was mentioned by Umm Salama that this is what used to take place, then we consider that this is the actual ruling which is allowed in Islam because otherwise the Prophet ﷺ would have mentioned something about it. So the woman, she can sit for up to 40 days and that which is beyond 40 days of bleeding, if it continues, then it is known as dam al-istihada, okay? Dam al-istihada or dam al-fasad. The woman, uh, if her blood stops within the 40-day period, but then it comes again, but it's still within the 40-day period, so it stops at 20 and it starts again at 30, is still considered as nifas, okay, because it falls within the same 40-day period. If a woman has a cesarean operation because she cannot deal with the normal childbirth for whatever reason, then if there's blood that comes from that, a lot of blood bleeding for, through the normal uh, part, the normal private part, then that's also considered the nifas, okay. If a woman has... Astaghfirullah, the brain's gone blank. If a woman has... Um, when the child uh, a miscarriage when the, if a woman has a miscarriage okay if it's after 80 days okay then this will be dam and nifas if it's before 80 days because 80 days is considered when the features of the of the uh, the child start to appear fully then if it's after 80 days then this blood will be dam and nifas and if it's before 80 days then this blood will be dam 
الاستحادة okay? دم الفساد طيب إن شاء الله and that's what we have to say on this chapter wa sallallahu alaihi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything which was correct was from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allowed us to complete kitab tahara of this book and as i mentioned on the group that the next chapter will be chapter zakah okay the chapter of the salah we've already done it it's on videos anybody who missed out can go back and review those videos by the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, I will be away for a few weeks. Sheikh Abu Hanifa will take the next two sessions with you guys, inshallah. Please do try to benefit and do, please do try to encourage others to also benefit from this very important chapter of zakah. When I come back, I will continue with, the, with you with the permission of Allah. So before we continue, a few review questions, please. What are the characteristics characteristics of dam uh, al of menstruation blood four characteristics we mentioned the smell of them is like what a good smell or a bad smell it's a rotten smell right like rotten eggs the brother said anything else it's thick yes the blood is thick thakhin. okay that's the second third anyone else it comes with pain okay very good and the color of the blood what's the color of the blood dark okay so it's dark it's thakhin, it's thick it comes uh, with pain the smell of it is bad smell and then there's a fifth one we can put to it as well the fifth one it uh, yeah it doesn't clot it doesn't clot okay because it's already clotted in the womb before it uh, breaks up and comes out okay uh, question number two what has to be made up after the haid for the woman what does she have to make up of Ramadan, huh? the obligatory fast have to be made up, okay? The optional fast, no need. Uh, number three, why does she have to make up the fast and not the prayers? What did we say? We have the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, but what else? We gave a reasoning. We said that this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because five prayers a day and only one fast a day, okay? So Allah gives ease to the woman that she only has to make up one fast rather than five prayers a day. What's the ruling for this woman to read or touch the Qur'an? Okay, she cannot touch the mushaf without a ha'il, without a something in between like gloves. What about the reading of the Qur'an? Very good. She could do it in her mind without moving of the lips, okay? But she cannot read the Qur'an as is normally read, okay? Like the junub until she becomes pure. She can also listen to the Qur'an for muraja, for revision and for reward. Tayyip, um, we see a woman and we know her to be hired we know her to be on her menstruation and she's reading a part of the quran but we say to her it's okay how can that situation be like tafsir like fiqh like this yeah so if it's in a fiqh book or it's in a book of tafsir and she happens to read it that's fine there's no problem as long as she's not doing it with the intention of reciting quran uh, question number six um, the woman who is hired, she has menstruation, she entices her husband to have relationship with her. Who pays the kafara? Okay, who, it depends on the desire, right? This is my point. So if the woman is not compelled, if she's not compelled, then she has to pay also the kafara, both on the husband and the uh, wife, if she's not compelled, right? What is the kafara? One dinar or, or half of dinar? Good, very good. And what is the tafsir? What is the details of that? as mentioned by Imam Tirmidhi. Exactly, so if in the beginning of the Hayd, you pay one dinar. Towards the end of the uh, Hayd, it's half a dinar, if that takes place. Very good, Asantum. Tayyib, uh, if a woman is divorced whilst in her period, what's the ruling of that divorce? It's a talaq bid'i, meaning that it's an innovative divorce, but it's valid, it takes place, okay? And the person has to make tawbah from doing that. Tayyib, is it possible for a woman to have Hayd three times in one month. How? So we said that the medium, minimum purity between the two Hayds is 13 days, that's a must. So it's possible that she can have one day period, 24 hours, and then 13 days purity, then another one day, another 13 days, and another one day uh, period, which makes 29 days. Tayyib, wa jazakumullah khair.